I reckon you guys would love to know who is sweatier, myself or Mark? Well, no, I, I really don't think they will, Heather, but I do think you guys would like to know how you can measure your sweat rate and equally as important, your sweat sodium concentration. Okay, Mark, maybe you do have a point. Well, today we are going to be heading down to the HQ of Precision Fuel and Hydration to find out how you can measure your sweat and, of course, find out who is sweatier. Uh, what on earth are you doing? Why are you so sweaty? I've just been for a hard run. I I've got my sweat with this, me. This is a, a very leisurely affair, Heather. You don't need to be sweaty. <laughs> You're kidding me. No. <laughs> Come on, go get yourself sorted. We're almost done here. <laughs> so, okay. Heather, we're going to measure your sweat sodium concentration, mm -hmm. which is part of the puzzle around what you sweat and yeah. how much electrolyte you lose. So, first up, what I need to do is put some electrodes on your arm. I don't mind which one. I don't mind okay, yeah, closer. Can, yeah, there we go. So, these, I'm going to put a little bit of water on there as well. And what that's going to do is increase the conductivity of the electricity we're going to put through and also it's going to make sure that we wash off any residual sweat or anything that's on the skin already. So am I the first person to rock up and think that I needed to bring you my sweat? Definitely not. No, we've had offers for people to bring little bottles of sweat uh, and then people always ask, what kit do I need? How are you going to make me exercise? But actually for this test, no exercise required. And that's Brilliant. because the, the chemical that's in those discs stimulates your sweat glands in the same way that when you get hot, your brain sends neurotransmitters to your sweat glands to cause them to produce sweat. We've put a little bit of that chemical into the skin okay. and then that will make you sweat just in just, that I'm tiny area. I'm not going to start area. pouring down no, my face again. No, if no. you do, that's just nerves and stress. <laughs> I want to win. What, yeah. What's winning? I want to win yeah. the test. <laughs> no, it's purely. This is purely just um, physiological stimulation of the sweat glands in that area. And then this little device, which has got some tubing in there and a hole in the bottom, we're going to put that on top for a few minutes to collect the sweat that's produced. Okay. And that's a really clean way of collecting sweat, where we don't get any contamination and also we don't get any evaporation because obviously if you're collecting sweat and it's evaporating, that can cause problems with the results of a test like this. Okay. Once we've got that sweat, it's going to go, it, the tubing is going to go onto there and be run through the machine to give us an idea of the sweat sodium concentration. And the, the magic that happens in here is uh, it's a conductivity analyzer. So that's measuring the resistance, the flow of electricity, which changes okay. because electrolytes are charged mm -hmm. particles, so they'll affect the conductivity of the sweat. There's a lot of variables when you're collecting sweat. One of them is the body part you take it from. There'll be de slight day-to-day -day variances mm -hmm. and that sort of thing, but we've settled on this method, this body site, and there's quite a lot of validation behind it. There's, there are arguments for testing sweat on different parts of the body. There's arguments for doing multiple sweat tests and those sort of things, but in general, a single sweat test is all most people need because it puts you in the right zone. It yeah. determines basically whether you're low, medium, high or very high. Okay. And that's what's most important. It's a bit like deciding whether you're a small, medium, large or extra large t-shirt. Mm, hope that doesn't change too much. Exactly, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, it, and it honestly doesn't, it doesn't tend to with, with sweat most yeah. of the time. There's a big genetic component to this in terms mm. of how your sweat glands function. And that's the predominant driver of it. And it's not going to make any difference if they had like a really salty meal last night? Not really, no, because what happens in the body then is your kidneys take yeah, care of that. Exactly. So you will pee out extra sodium. Yeah. And then if you had abstained from eating any salt for mm. the last few days, what we'd see is if we measured urine, you would be not peeing out any sodium at all because yeah. your body would be trying to conserve it, yeah. but it wouldn't really show up yeah. in the sweat. Yeah, yeah. It might do after multiple days mm. of abstinence or if you ate so much salt that the body was trying to get rid of a massive excess. Yeah. But for most people, if your diet's relatively normal and stable, you're not going to see a big difference. Yeah. So, what I'm going to do now is take the, the electrodes off. First of all, I'll take the black one off, and you see there's not much sweat happening under that one. Well, we're going to have a sweaty patch here, are we? we sh hopefully, we should see a little bit of sweat. There we go. Yeah, a oh. little bit of sweat being produced. And that, that will keep sweating there for about half an hour or so. So, take the first bit of sweat away, and then pop this over the top. 
And this doesn't represent rate at all, so how quickly that fills doesn't have any... No, I think it does actually, although there's not necessarily a really exact correlation okay. you can make. You, it's very difficult to extrapolate sweat rate for your whole body from a tiny surface area. But yeah. what we do know for sure is that in general, people who fill this collector more quickly mm. tend to have a higher overall sweat rate. Okay. Now, whilst I may have laughed at Heather coming in here covered in sweat, there are actually some sweat tests out there that do require you to get sweaty. So whilst Heather is collecting and gathering her sweat, I thought I'd take a moment to talk through some of those alternative testing options. So in addition to the patch test, the sweat sodium concentration test, it is really good practice to also do a sweat rate test. Now this is relatively straightforward, but does require a bit of exertion, some scales and a towel. Start by making sure that you're being for a pee and then stand on the scales and record your weight, ideally with no clothes on to keep it as accurate as possible. If this isn't possible, maybe because it's a little public, you can weigh yourself with your clothes on, but later on weigh all your clothing and subtract that. Now for ease with the equations, we do advise using kilograms or of course just use an online converter to translate after. Do your training session or even a race and record exactly how much you drink. The best way to do this if using all your own drinks is to weigh your bottles before and after and work out the difference. But to help, one milliliter roughly equals one gram. Post-exercise or race, dry yourself down, remove all your clothes, if you can, and weigh yourself. Take your pre-exercise weight and subtract your post-exercise weight to get your weight lost during the session. Then remember that number from your fluid consumption. You're gonna need that now. So we're almost there. Add together your volume of fluid consumed with your weight loss and divide it by the time you were exercising. Now, of course, if this all sounds a bit too much, then we'd recommend heading on over to the Precision Fuel and Hydration website and using their online spreadsheet that will do all the hard work for you. And we've included a link for that in the description just down below. Note that it is advised that you try not to go for a pee during these tests because that will obviously start to skew the results. Of course, if you do need to go, you need to go, and that's absolutely fine. So it's a rough ballpark figure. It's around 0.3 litres or 300 millilitres per bathroom stop. It's a fairly good rough ballpark figure, and that will equate to 0.3 kilograms. So you just basically subtract that from your sweat rate at the end. Now, in terms of the data collection, it's advised also that you try and do this on sessions lasting around 45 minutes to two hours. Anything shorter than that, and it can be subject to errors due to the manipulation in the equations. And anything longer than that two hours can actually be skewed by things like fuel utilization. I won't bore you with the details on that. So now you have your sweat rate, but unless you have access to a test like Heather's doing currently, then how do you work out or know your sweat sodium concentration? Well, we've identified six simple markers that you can check up against from home. So firstly, you may have salt marks on your skin or clothes. Your sweat dripping into your mouth may taste incredibly salty or starts to sting your eyes a lot. You may suffer from head rushes or feel rather faint post-exercise. Perhaps you get muscle cramps during or post-exercise. Maybe you just generally feel terrible after exercising in the heat. And finally, you may start to crave salty food post-exercise. Now, if you're saying yes to one or two of these, that doesn't really tell you too much, but if you're saying yes to three, four, more, all of these, then I'm probably gonna say you're a very salty sweater. Basically, what we've got here is the range of mm -hmm. sweat sodium loss that we typically see, from the very lowest at about 200 milligrams per litre yeah. to the very highest at over 2,000 milligrams okay. per litre. You're coming up at uh, okay. 839, which is okay. like just between low yeah, and Yeah, I mean, moderate. I've only ever used 500. I've never gone to the highest. Yeah, and yeah. All, of, all of what you've told us about your hydration and mm. electrolytes in the past suggests that this wasn't going to be super, super high. Yeah. I'm right up here. Oh, right. And about 18 or 1900, which yeah. is why when I was racing in the heat, one of the big reasons I used to have a lot of problems until yeah. I learned to replace what I was losing. And typically it's people up in these high and yeah. very high ranges that if they're doing longer and hotter events, yeah, they're the people that will suffer. Yeah. If they don't 
correct it with what they're taking in, but yours is, is low to moderate. Cool. And as I say, we could test you t um, tomorrow and it would be very similar. We could test you in a few weeks. It'll probably be within a few percentage points of that. Yeah. It tends to, like any physiological variable, it moves around a little bit yeah. day to day, but basically that's the kind of zone that you cool. find yourself in. Oh, interesting. So the, we've given, you've given me my number and I've seen obviously on the scale, which is yeah. kind of where I thought, but what, do, what does that actually mean? How can I kind of interpret this, this info and use it? Good question, because that's the question that really matters. It's yeah. like, how can you use this information? So what we are going to do is put that number into our um, calculator for mm. race nutrition planning. And okay. I've put you through on this one for middle distance triathlon. And you okay. can do this for any distance and actually different sports as well, cycling and, and running. And I'm going to ask you a few other questions that will influence the results okay. a little bit. And one of those is how often would you say you suffer from muscle cramps? Once a year. Very rarely then. Yeah. yeah, so you're not a cramper. And then what the planner gives you is an idea of the kind of numbers that you would need to hit hydration and actually carbohydrate wise okay. as well during a middle distance triathlon. So for you, this is suggesting a because the middle distance triathlon that we've signed you up for here <laughs> is in hot conditions and okay, because that's my perfect conditions so yeah. i'm happy with that <laughs> and because you're definitely someone who's going to be way closer to the front end of the field than the back end of the field because you'll, <laughs> you'll be working hard and you're a fit athlete um we've recommended for you about a thousand milligrams per liter of sodium okay. so that's kind of our mid-strength drink yeah um and plus or minus 250 milliliters about a thousand milliliters wow. an hour. That is way so, more than both things that I've ever done. Yeah, before. which and which is always interesting to understand because then what we do is have a conversation with you around the factors. Is that something which, you know, we feel based on your experience, mm. is this an area that where you've got room for improvement, yeah. or is this an area where you actually are experienced enough to know your body and think actually I can yeah. reduce those numbers or whatever a little bit. So, the the reason for it it um, giving you recommendations separately for the Kind of carbohydrates, mm. the sodium, and the fluids is that they're the three key things you need to get right mm -hmm. during any endurance event. Right. And we know from our past experience working with you a little bit that you tend to be a little bit lower than mm. average on the carbohydrate recommendations yeah. and possibly on the fluid and sodium. Life, so, and and that's yeah. and that's the thing about individual variations. Some yeah. people thrive on a bit more. Some people thrive on a bit less. Mm -hmm. But it, all of these, the aim of these numbers in the calculator is to put you in the right zone mm. to then go. And do some trials. This would be completely different if we'd have said you were racing in cold conditions, yeah. for example. Yeah. Whereas when you say you're racing in hot and humid conditions, it's going to extrapolate that your sweat rate is yeah. going to go up. And none of this overrides you listening to your body. Yeah. What we do suggest with a lot of athletes who haven't got your level of experience is they start out trying something like those numbers mm -hmm. and then adjust it as they go along. Yeah, so you yeah, try it some hard similar, training yeah. sessions yeah. or you try it early on in the race. Mm -hmm. And if you start to feel a bit full and a bit bloated, yeah. You back it off. Yeah. You don't need to kind of hit these. These aren't a minimal target. These are just yeah. a, a bit of, right. these just get you in the zone. Yeah. Cool. Now we're not done there because actually there's apparently a couple of other testing options and methods out there and available. So one is patch testing. Now this isn't too dissimilar to the testing that Heather and I have just done, but this has an adhesive absorbent patch that can be applied put on to various points on your body and the big benefit of this is that you leave them on during exercise then afterwards they're taken off they're squeezed and syringed out and then that fluid and sweat is analyzed so you can see the sweat composition the other big advantage is because you use it whilst exercising you can start to test it in highly specific sporting situations so you can start to understand how your body copes or is adapting in real world environments and scenarios. Disadvantages are though that you can start to get evaporative loss of fluids or sweat from those patches. So if that's not taken into account, that can start to skew the results. And also, this does still require a fair amount of time to test and quite specialist equipment that you're probably gonna have to go into a lab for. So actually, it's not as easily accessible to you and I as we might hope. Another is the whole body washdown technique. Now this is generally regarded as the gold standard for sweat analysis within exercise. And basically, as the name suggests, you as an athlete are washed down. You're washed down with deionized water pre 
exercise. And then you exercise in a completely, entirely enclosed environment, meaning that they can collect every drop of sweat that comes off you. And that is why it's regarded as the gold standard, because by collecting every drop of sweat, they can accurately determine how much sweat you are losing and analyze the electrolytes lost within that sweat. Now, the obvious disadvantage of this is that it's incredibly technical and requires some serious experts in the field, and not to mention some serious amount of kit. And for that reason, it takes a long time and having access to this is pretty few and far between. But another option that is more accessible to everyone out there is the Precision Fuel and Hydration website. Just jump onto their website, plug in some information about yourself, some data, and they can fairly accurately determine your sweat rate and your sweat sodium concentration. They've done that from years of research, testing number of athletes, and it's amazing actually how close they can get without you having to go to the extent of all this testing. So Heather, what is the answer? Who is the sweatiest GTN presenter? Well, when we come to sweat concentration, I came in at 839 milligrams of sodium per liter of my sweat. And we measured James as well, even though he's not in the video, he was there. Um, he came in at 860 milligrams mm -hmm. of sodium. Pretty so, similar. Yeah, really close actually, surprised at that one, but um, don't know what your numbers look like. 1,679 milligrams of sodium per liter Ooh. of sweat, which may explain why I've had quite bad cramping over the years. Yeah, that is quite extreme. That is basically double James and I, or like put us together Together, and that would be the amount of salt that you're losing out. Well, I mean, that is really interesting. Obviously, we've only tested our sweat concentration today, but we have covered sweat rate and concentration. So hopefully you guys have got lots of take homes that you can go and test yourselves or look up certain tests. And maybe you'll be surprised at your sweat rate or your sweat concentration. Do let us know if you've got any unusual findings. But I think I can tell you my sweat rate is quite oh, high too. I'm a little bit today. It is a hot day. Um, That's another method we didn't explain. <laughs> yeah. Well, guys, I hope you have enjoyed today's video. If so, please do give it a like, give it a thumbs up. And don't forget to check out Precision Fuel and Hydration. It's a fantastic resource on their website. And if you haven't done so already, please do subscribe.